Hello everybody, this is Boaz Feiner and I'm your friendly evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with a weekly evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 7th and the 14th of October 2017. First of all, I'm hoping you're all enjoying this wonderful fall if you are in the Northern Hemisphere or this wonderful spring if you are in the Southern Hemisphere. Just a beautiful time. It's this time that you can feel that the wind on your skin is just at the right temperature, isn't it? It's like the universe was created to make you part of it and enjoy it and, and, and that your body is perfectly suited for the outside conditions. And that's just a very comforting feeling. And if we're talking about comfort and reassurance, I think, you know, I've been thinking I wanted to share this with you before we actually go into the planetary positions up in the sky this week. I was thinking how comforting and reassuring it is. And that's absolutely what I love the most about astrology. Meeting with clients that I know nothing about and talking, if I'm successful, talking about, or if we're successful as astrologers, talking about subjects that have been cardinal in their life, that have been maybe the most essential struggles they've had through their years, that have been pivotal in their lives. Someone that doesn't know you, doesn't know anything about you, talks about these very intimate, very important subjects in your life. And that shows me that all the suffering and all the pain and the struggles that we are going through are not arbitrary. They're not in vain. If these struggles or themes were in the picture of the sky taken above my head at the time I was born, in a way so exact that I can go to someone who doesn't know anything about me and he would help me figure them out. That's very comforting for me because it shows that there's a reason for it all. That, as I said before, it's not arbitrary. Very comforting. So, about this week. First of all, tomorrow the 8th, very energetic day, very good day to enjoy the company of other people, to go out to a show, to go out um, to a concert. And that brings up immediately Las Vegas, which is crazy. And if you ask me, there will always be the psycho that wants to harm society. What society needs to do in order to protect itself is make sure that these wackos never get hold of guns and arms. And thus, it is time for arm laws in the States to change. And we'll be able to talk about it a little later on with Jupiter and Scorpio. <laughs> so my condolences and my prayers with everyone in Las Vegas. Terrible, terrible thing. So... The 8th is a beautiful day to enjoy the company of people, to go out to a concert, to enjoy good vibes and, and, and good good tunes. And, oh, Georgia's here. Come, Georgia. Come in. So you can come in. Excuse me, guys. Yeah. Okay. So, or enjoy going out to a gallery or enjoying aesthetics which is very good for that day as well, or enjoying the company of people or good food or drink. Because the moon is in Taurus, and whenever the moon is Taurus, it, it favors anything that you can enjoy through your body. But it's also in a grand trine with Pluto and Venus Mars, on the other hand. And that's just a lot of energy and a lot of joie de vivre, a joy of life. <clears throat> I'm tr going to try and show you the configuration um, in the video and then on the 10th we have a very challenging day we have Jupiter going into Scorpio ingressing into Scorpio and we have the moon in Gemini opposite Saturn in a grand square with Chiron and Venus Mars so all that satisfaction and, and good vibes we had two days ago are hit by a brick wall called reality showing us 
that things are the way they are, not the way we would like them to be. Yes, Georgia, and we have to deal with them. And we have to grow up and take responsibility. And there's a lot of mental effort since the moon is in Gemini, opposition Saturn. There could be a lot of criticism, mental criticism. So try not to be critical towards yourself or others on that day. We're going to leave Jupiter and Scorpio last because I want to talk about it uh, uh, for, long, for, for longer. So let's just go ahead and say that on the 12th we have the moon in Cancer opposition Pluto. That's a very emotional day. That's a day to... Be, Georgia, I'm in the middle of forecasting. Can you give me just five minutes, please? Appreciate it. Thank you. So, a lot of mental effort during that... I'm sorry, a lot of emotions during that day. The moon in Cancer is already melodramatic and emotional, and opposition to Pluto just heightens everything. We can have turbulent emotions through that day. Don't get caught up in the, in the drama. And uh, just to add up to the flair and to the mental... Uh, um, yes. To the... No, Georgia. Later. Come on, I'm, I'm forecasting. I'm sorry, guys. <clears throat> she just she loves to take part in the videos. Of course I do too. There's my, it's my videos, Georgia. Anyway, let's be serious about this. The the moon in Cancer opposition Pluto is also T squared by the Sun Mercury conjunction. So that brings in back the, 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 that brings back in the mental agitation, uh, so uh, or stress. So please just. Um, take it easy on the 12th. On the 14th, we have Venus entering Libra and uh, Mercury in Libra opposition Uranus in Aries. Whenever Mercury and Uranus are up in opposition, we could feel a little bit like it's a Mercury retrograde. If we are going somewhere, take a little extra time. If you're communicating with somebody, make sure that you pass on the exact message that you wanted to pass on. If you're utilizing any communication, um, appliances or the media be more uh, enhance your calm like they said in, a, in an old good movie but I don't remember which one it was I think it was Demolition Man not that good um, you ha we have to enhance our calm and we have to be much more tranquil and impatient with things because things can um, get messy with communication on that day but Venus entering Libra is a wonderful thing and for the next few weeks emphasis is on satisfaction through relationships on satisfaction through meeting uh, through meeting different kinds of people and enhancing our scope enlarging it understanding how people think from another point of view and reaching the middle ground and compromising becoming more diplomatic and more harmonious, more peaceful in our relationships. And that's a great thing. That's a good thing for relationships. And being peaceful is, is great. But whenever I see that too strongly in someone's chart, I always tell them, be careful not to cancel out yourself. Not to make the satisfaction of others your satisfaction. Not thinking about what you need and want yourself. So it's very good in order for us to become more compromising and more co collaborative and cooperative. Just don't cancel yourself out altogether. So, as I said, Jupiter enters Scorpio on the 10th. It's going to be there for about a year. What can we expect? Now, I was very pessimistic when I started investigating it, thinking that we're going to have extreme weather. If we're going to talk about uh, Pluto, Pluto is, is turbulent, wet weather, and we're attaching this archetype of, of Jupiter that enhances and enlarges everything. So I thought maybe more hurricanes, floods, tsunamis, maybe even earthquakes as um, uh, Pluto is connected with earthquakes. I was thinking about the heightening Jupiter of darkness, Pluto. I was thinking about the heightening Jupiter of chaos, Pluto, uh, of transformation, um, of turbulence and so on and so forth. But as I was checking the last cycles of Jupiter and Scorpio, I became very optimistic. Because Jupiter and Scorpio, let's talk about Jupiter in a minute, a minute, and then about, about uh, Pluto or Scorpio. 
for a minute, and then and then uh, we can understand the, the connection better. So let's put this aside. We don't need it anymore. So Jupiter enlarges everything it touches, right? Jupiter is the great enhancer, and by that enhancement, we actually widen our scope and get a better, wider view of things. We um, expand our boundaries and our horizons, and we become wiser. And it's all about ideology and our truth, and the truth that we follow in our lives, and learning higher knowledge. And illumination, bringing light into matters. Now, of course, Scorpio is almost the opposite. Well, this one is more ideological, still very passionate and a fire sign, but ideological, this is about emotion. Pluto is about emotion. Scorpio is about emotion. And not only is it about emotion, it's about hidden emotion. It's about all that emotional lava that flows ardent underneath our surface, running us sometimes without us even being aware of those patterns running us. That's the difference between Pluto and Mars, that Mars is the more conscious part of everything that pre that, that uh, everything that comes before that. And under it is Pluto, that brings that Mars outside. And if we're talking about Mars being the moment we're pushed into the world, into reality, Aries, that moment of, that moment of deliverance, and Pluto being just the moment before that. And we're talking about that baby being in the womb, not wanting to get out of the womb, okay? Being sustained by the womb, not really wanting to, to let that end, but there's something in every cell of his body or her body telling them it's time because I can feel the constriction, I can feel that I have zero movement ability already that things are pushing me towards that deliverance that moment of transformation from the outside to the inside that's pluto so of course if we attach it with jupiter we can have a lot we can have a very developmental transformational year both uh, as a society and both on a very personal level that, of course, depends where that Jupiter in Scorpio hits your chart. But on the other hand, we're meeting the emotional and the ideological. And the need to go deeper and understand things is heightened. And the illumination through darkness is heightened. So actually, I, I think that through this world, through this reality, it is only through darkness that we could be truly eliminated and set ourselves free. And when I looked at previous cycles, I've seen that a lot of the subjects that were taboos, a lot of the status quo which wasn't right, wasn't, wasn't legit, changed for the better at times that Jupiter was in Scorpio. Um, women got more rights. Women came into power in previous Jupiter and Scorpio cycles. Uh, people leading, uh, women leading governments. Uh, if we're talking about um, homosexuality being uh, permitted by the law, uh, I think it was three cycles ago, and then um, two cycles ago, uh, many countries started uh, permitting same sex marriages. And one cycle ago, it was uh, about lesbianism, gays, and even gender and transgender people becoming more in the mainstream. If you remember, Brokeback Mountain uh, came out the last cycle and, and won the best film, and among a lot of other stuff, because Scorpio is all about the taboos, everything that still runs underneath the surface, but we don't acknowledge it, we don't talk about it openly. Jupiter comes up and puts the, 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 the spotlight on it. So a lot of these taboo, psychological, sexual subjects, are going to change and hopefully for the better of course emotion is heightened as well and the need to to intensify everything is as intensified so we can have less positive aspects of that as well we can have people who are led by emotion 
um, really go to extremes, really go to extremes, and not necessarily in a positive way. Other good things that I've seen in previous cycles is uh, collaboration between nations that have been um, adversaries up to that point, like um, um, signing contracts for uh, the stop of uh, nuclear weapons uh, uh, manufacturing and prolification, or moving away the uh, warheads from aiming on the United States and vice versa in Russia between Le Yeltsin and Clinton in, in one of the previous cycles. I think it was two cycles ago. So good things are bound as well. All kinds of collaborations with other people, with other groups, Scorpio, and, and bringing wisdom and illumination through that, Jupiter. So I can wish you a very developmental and very transformational year. And may we all pray that this development and transformation needn't happen by trauma. That we can all go through that darkest hour, personally and generally, without much suffering. And with a lot of personal power and meaning. And that we can all be illuminated gracefully and not pass through the harshness of um, the storm. I want to thank you for listening and I want to tell you that I'm beginning an international, I'm, I'm teaching in uh, private lessons in English and uh, private course and courses in evolutionary astrology in Hebrew, but I'm opening up an English class. You can join in through a webinar once a week. It's an intimate class few people and me and we study every week at a convenient time both for the US and Europe and it's going to be in November you can contact me for more details and you don't need to have any uh, experience whatsoever with astrology we're starting from basics and we're learning everything the evolutionary way so even if you do know astrology learning it the evolutionary way would provide a very profound deep understanding of the archetypes and everything that they stand for and you will be, you'll be able to understand the psychology behind them much better. And of course, the evolutionary lessons and the spirituality behind them much better. And by the end of this course, you'll be able to open up charts your, on your own. And of course, for private consultations or any questions you might have, I'm very happy if you share this, if you comment on this, as Facebook is giving me trouble sharing these videos in the last two weeks. And... Um, and that way I need other people to share them as well. So I, I will be very thankful for it. So this is Boaz Feiler signing out. I want to thank you for listening. Have a beautiful weekend and a beautiful week ahead. Bye-bye.